I talk about traditional telco nodes, then you will find an architecture like this for LTE. So let's understand this in the context of LTE. So in LTE, we have a RAN part wherein we have E node Bs and we have a packet core and IMS, which we collectively can call as core network. It can be a voice core plus packet core um, jointly. Okay. So the packet core here, uh, if you see, you have boxes. Uh, basically, these are applications inside the packet core or the core network. So one of the application is MME. One of the application is SGW, PGW, HSS, PCRF, and some other nodes, right? So in a traditional telco environment, when this architecture has been implemented into in the form of a telecom network, then it looks like this. So basically you have your RAN hardware elements like in the form of a tower and baseband units, which we generally called as node B units or sites. And the core network is located at a centralized location wherein this can be your MME, this can be your SGW, PGW, this can be your HSS. So you see different racks of different boxes or different applications altogether. Here you have a proprietary hardware binded with the software. That means a kind of vendor lock-in which you cannot avoid. Okay, so the operator has to buy the hardware as well as the software from the same vendor, which limits innovation and uh, controls cost on the vendor's part. Now, to combat this lock-in, cloudification of the traditional network has been done by almost all the major operators of the world. So now the same uh, LT architecture, which you see here, when this has been cloudified, and uh, I would say that the cloudification has only been done majorly for the core network part. Okay. So when this network has been cloudified, your RAN remains same, but the core network will now look like this. So now we have a cloud rack wherein we have hundreds of COT servers, that means commercially off the shelf Linux servers. And on top of these Linux servers, the applications or these boxes are hosted as software images in the form of virtual machines or containers. So what we have achieved by doing this? So we have achieved a disaggregation of hardware and software to avoid vendor lock-in. Okay. So when I say disaggregation, that means the application of any vendor. So uh, the point to note here is the application means a software image only. And every box here that you see is an application or a telco workload. So the application now, uh, which can be, so this can be an Ericsson MME or uh, a Huawei MME or uh, a Nokia PGW like that, right? So all these applications can be deployed on infrastructure of any vendor. So when I say infrastructure, that means the Linux servers and the and the routers and switches of IBM, Red Hat, HP, Dell, Nokia, Ericsson, anyone. So now we have telecom application providers in the form of software images, and we have infrastructure providers in the form of data centers and Linux servers. And we call this disintegration or this whole process as NFV which is nothing but network function virtualization. So network virtu function virtualization is the process of cloudification of the traditional telco network uh, in the form of either virtual machines or containers. Now to reduce the complexity of the whole architecture, I have not shown the cloudification of the uh, RAN network here. Okay, so in most of the cases now some major operators are moving towards the cloudification of the RAN network also, which they call as cloud RAN or virtual RAN or open RAN. So there are many uh, different architectures and placements of uh, of the of the edge nodes into the cloud RAN network. So uh, the whole thing has been avoided to present in this in one slide just to reduce the complexity. Okay, so just for your understanding. This is the cloudification of the core network and this process is known as NFV. Now let's proceed and see the telco cloud marketplace and growth trends.